Hi everyone, this is Lucas from Tech Power Math, and what I'm going to be showing you today is a demonstration that I recently did in front of a panel of community college instructors. I was asked to speak on how the TI Inspire could be used in that setting, and the specific part of that demonstration that I'm going to be showing you right now is how to use the TI Inspire's graphing and dynamic geometry software uh, features to illustrate uh, the connections between the graph of a function and its first derivative. So if you're a teacher or student of first semester calculus, you know that it's very common to ask students to graph or curve sketch the first derivative of a function from the graph of uh, the original graph of the function. And you can see on the screen right here, I've got a cubic function. And so it's got a maximum or a relative extrema, a relative maximum located right around here at one, a minimum here, and then an inflection point here. Uh, but I found it can often be difficult for students to draw those connections when they go to curve sketch, even if they've actually had the opportunity to view the first derivative itself even if that uh, first derivative is right on top of the, the actual um, function itself. So I am going to start by putting that first derivative up on the screen. So I'm going to hit tab and then using the button to the right of nine, you'll see that I can select the first derivative here and I'll select first derivative of F1 and it'll go bold indicating that it remembers f1 of x and then I'll hit enter and you'll see we have our lovely first derivative of f1 of x and if you're very comfortable with curve sketching you'll see the connections pretty quickly here but if you're not and I've found that uh, beginning students of calculus are not they don't always see the connections here um, between the zeros of the first derivative in the original function so I found that using the dynamic geometry features and drawing some perpendicular lines we can help make those connections a little bit clearer so let me show you what I mean I'm gonna go into menu geometry and then I'm going to construct a perpendicular and when I see intersection point I know that the TI Inspire realizes that I want the intersection point of the first derivative and the x-axis and then I have to tell it what I want the perpendicular to and of course I do want it perpendicular to the x-axis. I'm going to hit escape at this point to turn off the perpendicular feature. And I wish that line kept going the TI Inspire's dynamic geometry feature uh, lines kind of look like segments unfortunately we can get around that if we go geometry points and lines and select point on we can put a point on that line click there and again hit escape and now grab that point and move it up and hopefully this will really illuminate it for your students if you're a teacher or if you're a student right now looking at this hopefully this will make the connection a lot clearer and that you can see that the zero on the derivative is a maximum a relative maximum on the original function which is exactly the behavior that we would expect but might not be obvious to you as a student and we can repeat that for the other zero or x-intercept and this time we're fortunate that it does extend through there I'm gonna go ahead and construct another intersection point though To make the connection even clearer and so you could see that in each case where we had a zero 
on the derivative, we had a maximum or a minimum on the original function. Because, of course, it indicates a change from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing on the original function. Because we went from positive to negative on the derivative and then from negative to positive on the derivative. Now that is really nice, but we can even take this a step further and we can look for inflection points. So we've got this minimum here on the derivative. So let's find that minimum with analyze graph. So first I'm going to click on it and I'm going to put a lower bound and an upper bound. You can see that it has verified the minimum right there at 3 comma negative 1 and now again I can create a perpendicular line with the construction feature starting at my point and perpendicular to the x-axis again the line doesn't quite stretch all the way up to our original function so I'll put a point on it to make that connection just a little bit clearer. Escape and then drag it up there. Okay, so this is where my derivative changes from decreasing to increasing. That indicates a change in concavity in the original function from concave down to concave up. So again, if you're a teacher of calculus, hopefully this is something that might help you to reinforce these concepts with your students. And if you're a student, hopefully this makes some of these connections a little bit clearer to you as you're um, learning some of these concepts in Calc 1. So I hope that uh, helps you out with your activities on the TI Inspire. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time at Tech Power Math.